Hi there, Daily Bread audience. This week we're looking at a wonderful theme, the Lord's Supper. Where does that term come from? It comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 20, where Paul's talking to the Corinthians about the covenant meal, and he gives it that term, the Lord's Supper. Now, it is the Lord's Supper because we have this great change-up which has happened. Initially, in the Old Covenant, it was practiced as the Passover. Jesus becomes our Passover lamb, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. We made reference to that. And so he's the one who we now remember when we practice this meal because he is the lamb who takes away the sin of the world. It is his blood which has washed us clean. It is his body which is given. Hence, we have these symbols of bread and wine. And so we looked at the great change up on Monday. Yesterday, we focused on the setup. The setup is found in Exodus 12, where it talks about the Passover and all that that speaks of. And there's wonderful symbolism in there and all sorts of things. There's the doorposts, receiving the blood and the lintels, making the sign of the cross over the people. And that's 1,400 years before Christ actually comes. Now today, we want to have a look at another term, one another name given to this festival. Reading from Luke chapter 22, verse 1, it says, Now the feast of unleavened bread drew near, which is called the Passover. So it is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, but it's called the Passover. It's the same feast, the same time. It's a week where they didn't eat unleavened bread. So we've got the change up on Monday, the setup yesterday looking at the Passover. And today we're looking at the great reset, the reset in people's lives, that forgiveness which comes. The readiness to walk with God is also symbolized in this unleavened bread. And a reckoning on our blood-washed reality. We find all of those in this thing. So in Exodus chapter 12, verse 8, it reads, they shall eat the flesh that night, talking about the, the night of the Passover, roasted on fire with unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. There it is. Verse 11 says, In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Well, further clarity comes to what's going on with this unleavened bread in verse 39, towards the end of Exodus 12. It says, And they baked unleavened cakes, of the dough that they ate, sorry, that they had before they left out of Egypt, for it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not wait, nor had they prepared any provisions for themselves. So, one of the commentaries I read says this, the Israelites ate the Passover meal as those committed to go walking with God, with Yahweh. They ate the meal as those committed to go walking with God. We find that in this unleavened bread um, symbol or the fact that they were called to celebrate it with unleavened bread. There was a readiness factor. They didn't have time to prove the, the bread and to allow the leaven to go through the lump of dough as it were. There was a, a readiness factor, an anticipation factor, a faith factor which is spoken of with regard to the leaven. They had to be ready to leave in that instant. Hence belt, cloak tucked in, sandals on the feet, ready to leave. They had to leave that night. And so there's lots to consider with this concept of leaven, but it's not until the new covenant that another aspect is added with regard to the leaven. But when it's added by Paul in 1 Corinthians, it's so obvious that it, that it refers to this. And so there's a symbolic or theological development of this idea of leaven. It's explicit symbolism of things which we get delivered of. So let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Cleanse out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. In other words, we are refreshed, we are reset completely by looking to Christ. Let us therefore celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So it forms a symbol or a picture of sinfulness, malice and evil, which is now washed out by looking to Christ. And we now have a sincerity and truth. And that is how we should practice the festival in a way that shows that we are a people filled with sincerity and truth. So there's a readiness to walk with God, to journey with Yahweh. And there's also the symbol of the fact that we've been reset. Malice and evil has been washed away and sincerity and truth has replaced it. So it's this wonderful picture of a new beginning. And every time we, we practice the, the taking of these elements and practice this right, this covenantal meal, we remember Jesus and we remember this great reset of forgiveness that we have in our lives. Most people, when they break bread, because we examine ourselves when we do it, have the sense from inside that there's a, a fresh start. And each time we do it, we remember the great reset and the, and the fresh start that we got in Christ. 
Sincerity and truth marks us, not malice and evil. So what a wonderful thing. We have this great picture of a substitute who's taken the punishment which we should have borne, borne the judgment, the wrath, and it's all washed away. And we now live with sincerity and truth. Let's give thanks for this amazing reset. Lord, we are so thankful that you, our Passover lamb, have brought us to a place of this incredible reset. And each time that we, we take the bread and the wine, we remember your body and your blood given for us, that we could be reset and refreshed, and that we could be a people who live with sincerity and truth, as opposed to malice and evil. Thank you.